Hey, 3D printer people. This is John here again with GeoDroid John. So I have a question for you. If you have a small print bed like this machine here, how do you make more space on it so you can print large items? I have a lot of, a lot of items I need to print for this clock, and a lot of them won't fit on this, the small print bed. Even on the CR10 over here, you still will run out of bed space at some point. So my question to you is, can you and should you stack the prints up like this? Inside there are three different gears, just like the one on top you see there. Now, what I suggest is that we try to do an experiment, see if we can stack these gears. And if it's feasible, if the print looks good, we'll try an even larger plate to see if we can fill up the entire volume of the bed all the way up and see how high we can go. Let's get started. So here I have three little gears and I'm going to assume I have a small print bed. I can't print all these at the same time. So I'm going to stack these up and then print them out with support and see if it actually works. Here you can see that I have the three gears stacked up on top of each other and let's add some support material. I'm going to do two millimeters at 45, generate automatic everywhere and see how that looks. Okay, close that out. I'm going to go check my processes and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some extra inflation distance here. I'm going to add like two millimeters extra inflation distance because it's a tall model and I don't want it to pick over. So let's see how it looks. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the one from the CR10 and we're going to remove the support material. This part's actually really fun because the support material is really crunchy. So kids, family members, they all like to remove the support material. Be careful. Uh, sometimes I like to use a knife. And, and there we go. We have the three prints that are released from that support material. Let's take a look at these together. Let's take this one and see how this one does. Okay, ready, set, go. Oh, there we go. So that one's done. Okay, so let's take a look at these individually. To remove, uh, I actually cut myself quite a few times trying to remove it. So I think that can be changed with some tweaks to your settings. So I feel like that's absolutely possible. Give it a shot and let's do a full plate Full plate, two layers high, and that should, if I'm correct, no, it'd have to be four layers high. Four layers high to equal the equivalent space of the CR10. Can we do it? Let's give it a shot. So here I have mocked up the CR10 print bed for all the clock, some of the clock items. It completely fills the bed. So let's see if we can squeeze this onto the Tronxy XY bed by arranging them in a way that can be printed. Let's switch to that profile and see how hard this is going to be. Tronxy XY X1. Okay. Now you see how hard this will be. I have to stack these at least four high to get a good one. And here we've crammed all those parts into the Trunk CXY build volume. I left plenty of space in between each layer, but I gave me a build time of 19 hours. Check this out. I'm going to generate supports. Boom, that's good. Let's go to prepare to print. It's building it, writing toolpaths, G code. Here we go. All right, looks like we're at 16 hours and 44 minutes and about a half pound of filament. Most of that's going to be in. So I've removed all the spaces between each layer and I'm about three millimeters of actual gap between any two layers. I also increased the speed to 80 millimeters per second and increased the, the speed of the infill, not the infill, but the support material up to 90% of that max speed. So it'll do like 71%, 71 millimeters per second on the infill. So this layer or this print should take about eight hours and 51 minutes. Right now it's about five o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday. So I start this now and it should be done around 3 a.m. Is that right now? 5 a.m.? Yeah, late in the morning. So we'll take a look at that and see how that looks. When it I just started the print, so let's get this thing, let's speed this thing up because no one wants to sit here for nine hours and watch this thing 3D print. Here we go. Okay, well, that's the first failure. We're one step closer to success. Second failure so far, it looks like it just won't stick to the print bed. The support material is too thin. So let's try something completely different. I've got a different file ready. Let's see what we can do. So here's the final result. I have printed it. It took nine hours. It finally came out. You can see all the support materials. I gave about nine minutes, excuse me, uh, three millimeters per layer, and I started peeling that off a little bit. But let's take this apart and see how clean this actually came off. 
So the parts popped off the bed very easily. And as you can see, the bottoms of it will be a little rough. After watching a few more videos, especially from Maker's Muse, uh, I just realized that my mistake was not using enough support, uh, dense support materials in Simplify 3D. I only used one here and one gap layer. I should have used more than one. I should have used several, maybe up to three or four dense infill layers. So that's a mistake, but we're, we're, what we're testing here today is just the principle of could you go vertical. So the parts popped off really easy. Let's take these apart and see how good the parts look. So before I actually take this apart, I just want to show you how good the Simplify 3D support material is. That is all detached from the inside of the part. I could probably just pull that straight out. And if I had pr planned my, my, my supports better, I would have left holes here in the support material so I could just pull it all out with, with a pair of pliers. So it's coming apart pretty good. So here are the results of the multiple part print on the Tronx EXY on a six inch bed. Maybe six inches, I don't think so. Yeah, maybe six inches right there. 150 millimeter by 150 millimeter. I was able to print this much material out in one print. There actually was a larger print directly underneath this clock face, but you can see that it was so thin that it didn't come out very good at all. So it was pretty sacrificial. Now the print quality really sucks, but this was not a test of print quality. I could have done a lot better on this, but these parts are very soft. I made them with like 0.25 millimeter height and like 5% infill. So they're very soft. Actually, that was pretty solid. There you go. But the fine details did come out, which is what I was really trying to see if the fine details would come out. If these will print and come out in one piece, this one's actually pretty good. Probably can use that. If you take your time and you set these prints up right, you probably will get some pretty good results. So it's mixed results. Yes, you can stack these 3D prints to save time, but no, you have to actually have trust in your printer, know what its capabilities are, and build up to those capabilities with your skills in your slicing software so that you can actually save yourself a lot of time. This is not, this is a, I would say this is pretty advanced stuff here for your 3D printer. So first thing you, need, you should do is learn how to use your machine really well. Learn its capabilities, see what these little cheapo machines can do so that you can build them up. So by the time you get to a Tronxy, or as you are a CR10, you'll be, you'll be really appreciative of all, all the space you have and you'll have the skills you need to actually do a really good print. So final conclusion when it comes to the Tronx EXY or small print beds and stacking it, it's plausible. I believe you honestly, you should and can sometimes stack your parts. It's not good for every single type of part. Some parts with fine details may get lost in the print, but large items that you need to save time, you don't want to swap out print beds every few hours. It might be a good idea to go ahead and stack it. Few notes on that though, you want to learn one, learn how to do your support structures. So Simplify 3D has really good support structures. Makers Muse did a great video. I suggest you go in there. I'll link it in the video and above. So learn how to use support structures. Two, use it for the right parts because not every part is designed to be printed with Simplify or with support materials. You might not want that rough finish. If you get to the point where you can don't, you can don't see that, then good for you. Uh, a few good things about it is that if your part does fail while it's coming up, it, that part on the bottom is still good. So you can just remove all the, the parts, remove it from the file, and then bring, go back in your machine and start right pretty much where you left off as you go up. So that was the secret to this print. Instead of printing them all stacked side by side in maybe two or four layers, I went vertical, stacking them all up one after the other in a tower situation so that if it want, the bottom one was printed and this one up here failed, I would actually be able to just remove the bottom three, reset the file so I only have this one to print. So that's, that's a pro of this. A con is that it takes nine to 10 hours on a small print bed, but it depends on you. So give it a try. Let me know what your results are. So that's my final thoughts on printing big with a small print bed. So if you like the content here, shoot me a like. If you wanna leave a comment below, please do that. And if you're new here, please subscribe.
Thanks for coming by. I'll see you next time.